Titans need to be the most physical team on the field all afternoon. A lot of great effort. First of them, offense, 248 yards in one quarter. The most yards in Titan history in one quarter. Okay. Welcome to the Mike Vrabel Show with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. Glad to have you with us just about 48 hours after the Titans finished off a big win over the Jacksonville Jaguars, 42 to 20, a complete team victory in every sense of the word. Sure. We got a lot of great efforts from all three phases. I think that the offense was able to take advantage of that field position. Um, Huge turnover on special teams. Defense kept, kept us in there, and I know that we didn't finish you know, really how we wanted to. There were some plays down in the stretch that we'd like to have back, but, you know, really did a nice job there in the mid part of the game. And the third quarter, of course, the Titans took it over. First possession of the second half as we go to Mike Vrabel's six-pack. <coughs> Titans leading 7-3 to three at this point and a big play in the passing game to the rookie, A.J. Brown. Yeah, you get great protection. You know, for us to you know, be able to complete these play passes, the pocket's got to be clean. And the run after the catch, A.J. gets upfield, secures it. You know, he's such a strong player. We, you know, we have to continue to find ways to get him the football. Um, but, but you can see right there, Ryan, clean pocket. He's able to step up. Not much there in the middle. And then, you know, A.J. You know, is able to run after the catch, break a few tackles. The rookie from Ole Miss continuing to bl- make plays, and he'll make another one coming up. The Titans throw a halfback pass on the next play and end up with pass interference taking them to the one yard line, but it's not a run coach. No, we got the big fell in there. Dennis Kelly reports is eligible. Um, you know, I might've given him a few tips on how to go out there and report as eligible, you know, brush the front <laughs> of your Jersey, but uh, you know, guys are happy for him. You know, nobody's, uh, you know, cares more about the team uh, than Dennis. And obviously you can see there, great play fake. And uh, there he goes, cradles it, spins it, gives his buddies a couple adult beverages. Nice stuff right there. Well done by the Titans. And then well done by the defense. It's 14 to three. Jacksonville gets their first possession of the second half. On third down, the Titans rally to the ball. Yep, this is who we are. You know, right there, you see guys, great efforts. Logan comes back, gets in on the play. You know, guys are running and uh, swarming and tackling. And that's what it takes to, uh, to play great defense. Um, each and every each and every down, but especially on third down when they throw one of those jailbreak screens out there. On Chark, the Titans get him down, receive the punt, get the football back at their own 26-yard line, and it does not take long to score, 10 seconds to be exact. No, it doesn't. A lot of great efforts. Guys are getting work on the front side, and Derek breaking a tackle at the line of scrimmage, and then maintaining his speed throughout the play, you know, being able to keep these guys away from him with the stiff arm and Um, You know, there's the tackle he breaks to get him to the second level. You know, I felt like guys on the backside of these blocks were were working and and understanding how critical the backside was. And, you know, there's the big fella just, uh, you know, rumbling past DBs. It's amazing to me that he can stay in bounds, running full speed while stiff arming another NFL player. That's just, you know, pros make the hard look easy. Absolutely. 21-3 21 to 3 at that point and so it's time for the Titans special teams to get into the act and this would be Darren Bates with the play. Yeah, Bates he takes uh, special teams serious. Um, obviously it's a critical part of the the phase of our game and you know he's able to cover the kick, makes the hit on the 20. Not only does he make the hit, cause a fumble and recover it, you know, been nice for him to score there and get the trifecta. But uh, this, this is kickoff coverage, man. Speed, avoiding using your hands. You see him avoid to the side of the return. Great form tackle. Keeps driving his feet. Gets the ball out. Uh, Kalu, I thought these guys trying to go after the returner. Great efforts to, to get that guy from getting the football. And then, you know, Bates is there to clean it up. Blatson game, Raymond and Kalu all in there piling up. And Bates finishes it off with the recovery. So on the next play, why not? How about more Derek? Henry. Well, watch the efforts here. I think Derek, you know, we, we get it covered up. Derek cuts back, but the efforts there by Ben Jones coming in there and Nate Davis talking about finishing uh, on the pile and pushing the pile. 
Um, guys did a great job there. You see Taylor and, and Roger working in combination on the backside. We come back and, and get, you know, Johnny gets him on the edge, but it's going to be the efforts to get him in the end zone by Ben and Nate that, that I really appreciate. And, you know, Ben loves that stuff right there. It's 28 to 3. The Titans get the football back after a punt. And how about another big play from the offense, this time in the passing game? Yep. And you can see here, clean pocket and, and A.J. really strong hands. But here's, here's what makes these things go. You know, Corey Davis is highlighted. Great, great downfield block that allows us to, to hit a 25-yard gain, turns into a 65-yard touchdown. Nine plays for the Titans in their first four drives of the second half. 225 total yards and 28 points. Wow. What a run by the Titans as they go on to blow out the Jaguars. When we come back, our Bridgestone clutch performance of the game, that and our Delta Dental guess the Titan. That's coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show. That part. You love that. I hate that part. The Bridgestone clutch performance of the game. Hard to pick one, but you have to do something related to Ryan Tannehill. Game is scoreless in the second quarter, and look at Tannehill put it on the line to go get six. Well, I think he made a decision when he when he comes out of this thing that uh, guys are covered downfield, and you can kind of see him pointing like, hey, go block. And I, I thought he was going to slide, then I didn't think he was going to slide, then I thought he was going to slide, and I'm thinking, oh, I didn't anticipate him jumping. But uh, – you know, that's a huge effort. I think the guys appreciate it. Um, you know, we're lucky to be able to have two quarterbacks that are mobile and that can, can extend plays with their feet. 21-yard touchdown run for Tannehill. He would add another touchdown run later in the ball game. That's our Bridgestone clutch performance of the game from Sunday. Time now for our Delta Dental guest, the Titan. We show a picture of a Titan when he was a youth, and Coach Vrabel guesses who it is. Okay, so this is one shot. Not a great shot. And let's take a look at that child now. So we had the shot. I'm not really sure what the first shot was. That's the second shot. He obviously has an older sibling. I think that's a brother. Does that give you any sort of hint? No. Okay, zero hint. All right. So do we have a good feeling about this? No, not a good feeling, but you're going to tell everybody my record, right? What, that you're? My, my Delta Dental record. Overall? Yeah. That you're five out of 10? Or really five out of 11 because you missed two last week. Sorry. I missed my own self and I missed you. Yes. And um, it looks just like me. But that's not me. And that's not you. I can tell you that. There's your hint for the week. Thank you very much. More coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show. I think after this. All right, so that youngster is resting atop a pig. I, I'm dead serious. Now, there's the second picture, but when we go to the first picture, and this is the same guy, the same Titans player, that's a pig. He's taking a nap atop a pig. Looks so comfy. It's comfy. Uh, that may be a hint. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, you know, I do think that this, uh, there's one guy that's really become uh, pretty infamous with the Delta Dental. Uh, guess the Titan, and uh, I think we finally have come across uh, Ben Jones. Is Ben Jones the correct answer? It is the correct answer. Finally. Mike Vrabel, here's what you've won. The infamous Ben Jones. You've won a chance to watch the Geico <clears throat> gladiator of the game. Another offensive lineman. Of course, if you catch a touchdown pass, you've you, got to be featured on the Geico gladiator. You are the, the gladiator. And you love it for Dennis Kelly. I do. I love Dennis Kelly. He cares a lot about the team, and I'm happy to see him uh, do things to help us. I think people are going to really enjoy this. Amy Wells standing by with big number 71. This is your Geico Gladiator of the game. Dennis Kelly, the Titans had a big offensive performance against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tell me what was working so well for the Titans offense. You know, I think it's just one of those things where everything really started to click. That third quarter, it seemed to whatever we did, it seemed to work. You know, the, the line did a great job opening holes. Derek you know, ran his heart out. AJ had a great play. Ryan was making throws. You know, you look at it, you know, the defense did a great job. The special teams got in it with the, the turnover. So it was definitely uh, an example of complimentary football that, you know, we want to continue to do. Now we got it out of the way talking about your teammates because I really <laughs> just want to talk about you. You had your 
first catch and mm -hmm. your first touchdown as a professional football player. How did it feel scoring six points? Yeah, it, it's a really cool feeling. You know, Art and I have joked pretty much since I've gotten here that, you know, he's going to find a way to give me a touchdown. And so we've had plays in the game plan and for whatever reason it's just never really happened. And so it just worked out that it was like the perfect situation. And so, you know, Ryan did a great job. You know, he, he kind of made fun of the fact that my eyes got super big to catch it. Just glad I could do it. You know, my family was here and so it was, it was a cool moment. Whenever it comes up, there's always, a, I always tell my wife, I was like, it might happen. But again, with it being four years at this point, and so she's like, okay, yeah, sure. And so for it to actually happen, like, like I said, it's just, it's a cool thing. Was getting in the end zone everything you dreamed it would be? Yeah, definitely kind of like it slowed down, but it also sped up at the same time. It was kind of weird. Obviously, like with the celebration, trying to make sure everyone got involved and got to have fun with it. But yeah, it's definitely something I'm going to remember. Derrick Henry had a big day. Mm -hmm. When he is super successful and able to have some of those long runs, is the offensive line also successful then? Yeah, I think it kind of goes hand in hand. And, and kind of like I mentioned, it builds that confidence. And it's one of those things where when he gets rolling, it's, it's you know, is this the play? He's going to break another one. Is this the play? Like, and so you kind of get excited to run these plays again because you're like, it's going to happen you know, behind me or I'm going to have a big block to get him going. And so again, it's just feeding off of each other. So how are you able to use this victory and take it on even to next week when mm -hmm. you're playing another division opponent? Yeah, I think it's just something we will watch film and, you know, see what we did well and see why we did that well. And I think that's one thing that gets forgotten a lot is, you know, not everything has to be negative. Obviously, you have to learn from it, but there's things that you did and you it might click, be like, you know, if I do this every time, then I'll have that block or, you know. And so I think we can learn from it and, and grow from it for sure. A position of tradition for the Tennessee Titans, I give you left tackle. When the team moved to Tennessee, Brad Hopkins had already been the starting left tackle for four years in Houston. That would continue through 2005, as Hopkins anchored Steve McNair's blind side for his entire career. When the Pro Bowler stepped aside, he handed the left tackle mantle off to another future Pro Bowler, Michael Roots. The little-known star from Eastern Washington became a well-known star for the Titans, providing constant protection until an injury ended his career during the 2014 season. At that point, Ruse was succeeded by Peter Lewan. And Titan fans know Lewan's story. Three straight Pro Bowl. So for over 20 years, the Tennessee Titans have never had to worry about left tackle. Brad Hopkins, Michael Ruse, Taylor Lewan, three stalwarts of protection. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. Titans linebacker Jayon Brown recently launched his MVP program. It's a student incentive program in collaboration with the YMCA Community Action Program, helping at-risk and underserved youth in Metro Nashville, Davidson County, to achieve the brightest future possible by closing the opportunity gap. The goal of Jayon's MVP program? Well, number 55 wants to encourage middle schoolers in the YCAP program to be, quote, motivated students, supportive classmates, and to live a healthy lifestyle. Jayon's hitting the road to drive home his message. Hey, Jayon Brown here at Donaldson Middle School. Here about to go talk to the kids give them some positive vibes. I was in the YMCA when I grew up and going through elementary school through middle school, so I've been in this seat before. The great experiences I had, the friendships and, and the cool trips we went on, and it was, really, it was really helpful for me and helped me shape to be the person that I am today. So I just wanted to give back to the YMCA and to these kids as well. I'm visiting four different schools and from each of those after school programs, picking one kid out of that program to be a J.I. MVP, which is like you're taking care of your schoolwork, making great decisions, you know, staying out of trouble, showing improvement. I want to give them opportunity to, to come to an NFL game, experience that, and also reward them for their, their good behavior. Jayon Brown playing some good football, but really an important guy in this organization for what he does overall in the community. Special human being, Jayon Brown. Can't say enough about all of our players, but but Jayon and being able to do um, what he does with that after-school program, 
you know, I know that he's had a lot of mentors growing up in, in, in Los Angeles um, in Long Beach. Um, and so now, now given the opportunity, he's trying to do the same thing uh, to those kids in our community um, in that after school program. Good stuff, paying it back. Absolutely. We're thankful for a lot of things during the course of this week. One of the things the Tennessee Titans are thankful for are people who show us courage and tenacity like Morgan Gorst. What an example. Morgan Gorst is a 13-year-old youngster from Wisconsin whose favorite player, Marcus Mariota, his favorite team, the Tennessee Titans, and when the ball club found out, this guy, Mike Vrabel, invited him to be part of practice before the Jacksonville game. Why is it important to you to take youngsters like Morgan Gorst fighting cancer and say, we want you to be part of us? Well, we've had bad days, but we've never had a day as bad as, as Morgan and his family. Um, he's fighting uh, the good fight and, and one that, uh, you know, he'll continue to fight and we appreciate it. We love it. They're inspiration to us. We get to see these players, the joy that they have when he got to see Marcus and the entire players and the entire team and, and to be able to get him to that huddle and have him break down our huddle, huddle Saturday before the game was, was very special. An honor that very few get to take part in. He took part in on Saturday when Mike Vrabel welcomed Morgan Gorst to Titans practice. Take a look. My friend Morgan here, our friend, okay, is battling his ass off. He's got brain cancer. And every day he is battling. Okay, so understand he wants to spend time with us today, the Tennessee Titans, you guys, me, and uh, we're honored and privileged to have him here. He's gonna break you guys down. Here we go, Morgan. Wait on three! I thought it was just gonna be like a high bro hug. <laughs> I'm done. Not a breakdown. <laughs> One, two, three, three. Awesome. <laughs> Coolest thing I've ever done. You're my favorite player. <laughs> you know, you have very few moments in life that you can really look back on, and this is going to be one that he is going to think, wow, they did that for me. And it's just a fantastic opportunity that NFL teams as a whole have and that we appreciate so much that the Titans are willing to do. It was an email and it was, hey, yeah, can you come next weekend? I, I mean, it was, it's fantastic. The, the power that you have to really change lives in such a positive way is is amazing. Awesome. Well, very nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Morgan, you're an inspiration, all right? Keep doing your thing, buddy. That's a young man with guts. No question. He's a lot tougher than all of us, and uh, we're, we're proud and we're better to know him. Morgan Gorst, an inspiration to the Titans who was here last weekend. When we come back, Mike Vrabel's keys to success. Stay with us. If you are not a subscriber to the official Titans podcast, you should be. You can download it wherever you get your podcasts, including titansonline.com. We also take your questions. Go to titansonline.com slash OTP cues. That's where we take your questions and we'll answer them on the December 3rd edition of the OTP. OTP is a great show. Thank you. guys you. do a great job. Thank you. We appreciate that. <clears throat> Let's get to Mike Vrabel's keys to success. We got to start off. You're going to Indianapolis. Peyton Manning's not there. Andrew Luck's not there. What do they do now? They run the ball. They do. They do. They run it very well. They have, they have three good backs. You know, Mac obviously, um, Hines, and now Williams. Um, they've been, you know, been able to run it with anybody that's in there. They have a very good offensive line. It's a line that's been together um, since really last year. Um, two really good guards. A great center. Um, They've been able to run it on everybody. So it'll be critical that we're able to stop the run uh, to put these guys in third and long situations. And when you get to third and long, when third downs defensively, yeah. like you did early in the game with Jacksonville. Absolutely. This team here is, is with Indy, you know, they're, they're a top 10 third down because they operate in third and short, third and medium. And they can, they'll go fast. It'll be important for us to be ready for tempo on third down. That's something that's part of their package. And, um, Getting off the field is going to be huge. They go on fourth down a lot too, don't they? You told me uh, 16 times. 18, 10, of 10, 16. Of 10 of 16. Yeah, that's big. Okay, third key, 
win the red zone offensively, an area where you have been doing well. It is. It's something that's been our strength, and I'd like to think that this is going to be strength versus strength. This is something that they've done a very a very good job of of not allowing touchdowns, and it's something that, that when we get the ball down there, we're going to have to score touchdowns like we have. Um, start a new streak over again, hopefully, uh, this week after, you know, after what we did last week. AFC South showdown in Indy, exactly where you and this Titans team want to be. That, that is. It gives us a chance to, uh, to try to get a, a, a step up on another team, and we put one behind us last week, and let's see if we can't do it this week. Remember, the game Sunday is at noon central time. We're on the air on Titans Radio at 11 a.m. with Titans Countdown. We hope you'll join us for that big ball game from Lucas Oil Stadium. For head coach Mike Vrabel, Mike Keith says thanks for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next time. Happy Thanksgiving.